This morning, we're on boarding of the third largest island in the world. And one of the last places that you have the opportunity to see orangutans in the wild. We're literally hopping on a riverboat right now to cruise down the river and search for the orangutans, a pygmy elephants. And the monkeys. And the monkeys. We gotta put on our life vest. Though if you go in the water, there's crocodiles, so I don't know, I don't know what the life vest is gonna do. We are in Sabah, Malaysia, the northernmost state in the island of Borneo, on the largest river in the region, the Kinabatangan. 350 miles long, winding through some of the most biodiverse areas on the planet, the entire lower half of the river is a designated wildlife conservation area, with dense jungle surrounding both banks of the river for miles. If we stand any chance of seeing orangutan in the wild, it's going to be here. We've been on the boat for like 30 seconds. These long tail macaw, they love the fig trees. Cheeky monkeys. the monkeys eating berries. We left the macaques to their breakfast and continued further down the river. It wasn't long until we spotted something much more sinister. The Kinabatangan River is home to a large population of saltwater crocodiles. A bit confusing as the river is fresh water. These are the largest species of reptile on the planet and can grow up to 20 feet long. There are so many in the river that you're almost guaranteed to see one warming itself on the banks in the morning. It's a cool crocodile. It's a crocodile. It's just a little one. He's only like a meter long. He's looking right at us. He's too small to have us for lunch now. This part of the river is also a bird conservation area and is home to over 700 species of bird, with over 50 species that can only be found in Borneo. We watched the swallows diving over the river catching insects to eat and spotted this great white egret relaxing on a branch and a couple of gray herons up on the treetops and this pair of black and red broadbills building their nest in the branches and watching over everything was a crested serpent eagle looking for its next meal. Nobody warned me about this. When you're young, your life is full of parties and bad decisions. And the next thing you know, you're waking up before dawn to go bird watching. That's how I know I'm getting old. We carried on down the river with our eyes peeled, searching in the trees and banks for any signs of movement. And it wasn't long until we spotted something. Big crocodile. I think that one will have you for lunch. This one might. <laughs> You go first. <laughs> Thankfully, crocodiles usually have to warm up in the sun for several hours before they can go hunting. We didn't see any orangutan yet. Or any elephant. Monkeys, a lot of monkeys and a lot of uh, birds. But well, we might see one. I'm hoping. There's still a chance. And then, out of nowhere, we spotted something far off in the treetops that cannot be found outside of Borneo. Proboscis monkeys, a large endangered species of monkey with a rather unique facial feature. A large drooping nose for which it's named. These monkeys were much more shy than the macaques from earlier. Then it was time to head back to the pier, but not before some of the wildlife got up close and personal with me. Oh, one of those guys? Can you get off me, please? He's a jumping spider. There he is. A lot of the spiders like us so much. Oh. That was a lot of fun. Saw two crocodiles in the wild. 
You're like a professional my... crocodile spotter now. I didn't well, you spot... are in your crocodile outfit. Yeah, Crocodile Dundee or Steve Irwin. I'm either one of those crazy Australians. I'm a little upset we didn't see any of the orangutans or the elephants, but those are like, yeah, anyone that spots them in the wild are so lucky. Because unfortunately, the situation here in Borneo is has seen better days. The, the palm oil plantations have really all but taken over the island and the wildlife has been pushed to smaller and smaller and smaller areas of land in which they can inhabit, which means the, the numbers of them are just dwindling. So if you're lucky enough to see them along the river, you get really lucky. Our plan is not over yet. We're here for the next few days. And during that time, we are going to do quite a few cruises down the river to try to spot some of these animals. We're also gonna dive a little bit into the culture as well as do a few hikes. So I'm thinking this morning, we go back to the lodge and we have breakfast, and then I think we're gonna take off on a hike. So let's get back, because I'm pretty hungry, even though we just sat in a boat. Some locations here, and a lot of locations here actually, the palm oil plantations come directly up to the river. But the, one of the good things is, that the government has mandated that they cannot go all the way to the riverbank. They have to leave like a corridor of jungle along the river all the way continuous so that the wildlife can go up and down the river so they don't get cut off from their source of food and water. Hello, sweet baby. How were you this morning? <laughs> huh? You're the goodest boy, huh? He's so cute. Coffee. We didn't have time for it this morning. It was too early. How are your socks looking? Styling. Oh yeah, styling. We're going to the Oxbow Lake. And he said the water's high enough that we can actually bring the boat in through the smaller river, close to the Oxbow Lake, and then do the hike from there. We don't have to hike all the way from here, which is nice, because it means we get to go back out on the river. My socks, these socks are like this. I tuck my socks in like this, because there's a lot of leeches here in Borneo. They move quick, quite fast and they'll just grab onto your leg. As you pass on the, there's like a leaf here, you'd be passing and he'll be ha hanging here. He'll be just hanging right here and he'll grab for your, whatever piece of clothing or part of your leg or whatever's there. And then he's gonna climb looking for a juicy bit to bite you. So if you tuck your socks into your pants, he can't get to your legs. Back to the boat again. Back to the boat. Uh, private tour. Hopefully the water's high enough where we can make it in, in with a boat. Yeah, I hope so. If not, I'm ready to trek. I brought my hiking boots. This is everything I wanted. This was like what I thought when I thought of Borneo. Amazon of the East, huh? Fern? Yeah. Fern and forest side, they are totally different. So fern... The boat ride up the creek surrounded by jungle might be one of our favorite things we've ever experienced. I haven't seen any crocodiles back here. Not yet. This feels like the real adventure, huh? Yeah. Just as we thought we'd seen it all, an eagle flew out right in front of us towards the lake. <laughs> he made it to the lake! <laughs> oh, there he is! This is an oxbow lake that we're in right now. They used to be part of the main river, but over years, different erosion and deposits move the bends of the river into a new location, and eventually it seals up the old parts connected to the, the this bend of the river, 
and then it becomes a lake, like an octopole lake. It looks like an, a bow if you're looking down on it on the map. This is my first time being at one. I've seen them from planes and things like that when we're flying over, but I've never been to one. professional we, monkey spotter. Yeah, we just saw some a, a group of proboscis monkeys jumping between the trees. But I think we might have spooked them just a little bit because it started moving on. But that was cool. We never seen them up that close before. It was only far away. Oh yeah, look at this guy. Hello. Now we hike. Perfect. Okay. We're in the jungle. Our guide has his machete ready. Not sure what we need that for. Hopefully it's just clearing some brush. This is everything I wanted. I envisioned our adventures in Borneo. It was, this was it. I'm ready to get on foot and see a little bit of the jungle. Oh, it's, a it's a red bug. Cool bug. Oh, look at these little mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, they look poisonous. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> then mushrooms yeah, eat us. They are compost. <laughs> yeah, they are compost. compost everything. So mushroom, they are compost everything. Hiking through the jungle was really exciting. <laughs> Any wildlife we did see were there and gone before we could catch them on camera. It's a lot more difficult in here between the trees to get a clear shot. But we both enjoyed ourselves massively. We hear them. We can't see them. Very alert bird. Big, big bird. Yeah. You can hear the rhinoceros hornbill in the background. Go we'll have a sit first. Good walk. Good walk. It was a great walk. But we didn't know that our day was about to take a turn for the worse. Yeah. Drone got stuck in a tree when I was trying to bring it in. I'm not sure exactly where it is. I caught it. I caught a branch and it fell down. And it's in a tree right now. I think it's right over there. But I'm afraid to start the motors. Yeah in case it falls into the water. Yeah. Straight ahead. Right here, I think. Our guide, Aslan, offered to climb the tree to get the drone back, but the branch it was stuck on was too thin to climb out on. So we tried to shake it loose and hope to catch it as it fell. No luck. It bounced off another branch and went right into the muddy, crocodile-infested lake. What happened, Ryan? I crashed the drone into a tree on the lake. Don't ask me how I managed to do that, but I did. Ah. I was left to replay my mistake over and over again in my head as we made our way back to the main river.
headed down to the river for the third time today for our evening jungle boat cruise. A few more people arrived at our accommodation. So they're taking two boats out and I'm hoping that we see orangutans, elephants. I think it might just not be the right season for elephants. Because he was saying today when we were on our jungle track, when we were like walking, it's not like fruiting season for one of the, tr for like a certain type of tree. And when it's fruiting season, it attracts a lot of the larger animals like the orangutan and the elephant and even some large cats, even leopard. Because they eat what's on the tree and the bigger animals come to eat the animals that are eating the fruit off the tree. But they're still out there. I'm hoping that they're thirsty this evening and they come down to the river for a nice spot of water. Two different boats or the same? They're bringing another boat. We're going to go with Aslan. Oh, cool. Hello. Let, me, let me see your seat. I'm living. You're in a, in a, a in plastic the, it, garden chair. I'm in the garden seat. We're going down river? Down yeah, river. we go a different way now. Yeah morning we went up river for about an hour and then turned back and came back today we're going down river probably about the same an hour down river and then turn back and come back so hopefully we'll see some different things we didn't have to wait long another boat was stopped up next to this juvenile saltwater crocodile it was only about two feet long when they grow up for the female the size they can reach Five meter female and male can reach seven meter. Wow. Uh. Oh, yeah, monkey. Uh. Proboscis monkeys. Proboscis monkeys are quite funny looking creatures. Both the adult males and females have a large pot belly. Females and the young have a pointy upturned nose and the fully grown males have a very large bulbous nose that hangs down past their mouths. They are very calm and non-violent compared to the macaques and often will coexist alongside orangutan and gibbons peacefully. Our guide just got a tip off about a special surprise waiting upriver and we left the monkeys behind in search of something even more exciting. And judging by the amount of boats that were sitting there, we weren't the only ones excited about it. There's an orangutan up there. Just follow this big trunk, this big trunk, uh -huh. until in the middle, move to other tree. The tree with the, with the trunk like this, and they have an orangutan. I see his arm, yeah, look. Like you see his arm right there? Yeah. See that you see that dark shadow? How many? One? No, two. Two? Yeah, mama and a baby. Oh, mama and a baby. While we weren't able to get as good a view of the orangutans as we did in Sepalok, I think that's the whole point. These are wild creatures in their natural habitats. Stands to reason that they'd be more wary of people than the hand-raised orangutan in Sepalok. Also, it's probably the least intrusive way to see these orangutan in the wild. We are confined to the boat in the river. There's no way for anyone yeah, to get any closer to the orangutan than they would bit. like. Oh, if at any point they feel overwhelmed, there's miles of jungle directly behind them through which nobody can follow. Ow! <laughs> that was for making him climb that tree earlier. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. That's why you made me sit here. Huh? <laughs> This big tree. Yeah, I see yeah. right there. This big tree. I see. There's two of them. Yeah. There's two. Yeah. Yeah. The river gave us two orangutans. <laughs> Took away our boat engine. <coughs> this doesn't look promising. Oh, are we going back? Yeah. Oh, okay. in the back? Yeah. In okay. the back. Hey, 
You abandoned the ship? Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys later. He's going. Going to the coast? Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> get a new <laughs> engine. Get a new motor. <laughs> yes, new motors. All right, see you guys. Bye bye. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to Borneo. <laughs> We came across a group of macaques on the opposite riverbank and the guide brought the boat real close to them. The more I learn about macaques, the more I dislike them with their temperamental and aggressive behavior. He's, yeah, you're gonna be underneath him now in a second. Hello, monkey. I much prefer the more gentle orangutan and proboscis monkeys. And there's the two that are grooming each other. Oh, look at the baby. You got this perch, dude. He's still over there trying to start. I found this monkey everywhere. Never make eye contact and smiling to this monkey. I just ignore them. For example, you found the, this monkey on the way you go back to the lodge. Just ignore. Don't see the eyes, don't show your teeth. Sometimes they will attack. Sometimes this monkey, at the breakfast time, they come to our restaurant. Huh? They come to our restaurant and they take everything at the restaurant. They know how to open the box to take the bread. Ah, oh look, they're right here. Yeah. He got the boat running. Oh, it's not staying. Re remount the boat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oops, I'm sorry. Yep, it's okay. Thank you, thank you. There's my lawn chair. I'm my child sized. Life jacket. It doesn't smell good at all. Doesn't sound too good either. We'll make it back. No, no, no. Oh, bye. You're good, <laughs> Oh my goodness. Back where I belong in my lawn chair. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. <laughs> The dodgy outboard managed to get us back to the jetty just before sunset, and we walked back to our lodge for the night. A bat just flew right by my face. Ah. I'm really, really upset about losing the drone. It's gone. I clipped a tree when I was flying it back and went straight into the lake and went for a swim. And then the water was Probably like eight or nine feet deep and completely muddy, so I don't think there was much chance of getting it. And there's crocodiles in that water, so I didn't fancy jumping in and trying to find it. But um, other than that, the day has been really, really good. I'm exhausted. So is Brit. I think we're going to go grab something to eat, and then we're going to go to sleep. Try and get up early tomorrow again, do the same thing. That is the end of our first day here at Kinabatangan River. Don't forget to like and subscribe to come along with us on all of our adventures. Next week we'll be exploring different parts of the Kinabatangan River and attempting to recover my drone from the Oxbow Lake. Until next week, bye!